Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, is a vicious bacterial infection with life-threatening diarrhea, fever, colitis, abdominal pain, and it affects about 336,000 people every year, killing 14,000 and costing a billion dollars a year. This is caused by antibiotics killing the good bacteria and then allowing the dormant C. difficile in the intestines to become active. So how do we treat this in conventional medicine? Well, some of this is kind of silly because we do the very thing that caused the problem in the first place. We use more powerful antibiotics, <laughs> right? But the problem is there are always more resistant bugs that are in the intestinal tract that are going to overgrow. So you may wind up with candida, you may wind up with C. diff, you may find a, a, a pseudomonas infection that's resistant to antibiotics or MRSA. So it's not the smartest thing to do. But that still solves the problem most of the time. So talk about this new research to curb the C. difficile. Yeah, interesting. A Harvard and Penn State study that was done in uh, October of 2012 showed that there's an enzyme in the intestinal wall, Vicky, that's called intestinal alkaline phosphatase that when it's there, it helps balance the gut microflora a little bit better. So they give that with the antibiotic? Yeah, they give that with the antibiotic in the study that they did. And what they found was is that they, the, the mice that they treated really got better a lot faster. They gave four days of antibiotics to the mice. And then they gave them some intestinal alkaline phosphatase in one group, but not in the other group. And then they went ahead and they gave the mice, the poor little mice, C. diff. And they all got sick from it. But what they found is that there was less, that the C. diff lasted much much less longer in people that are in the, in the mice that were treated with intestinal alkaline phosphatase. So it works to help to make the infection go away faster. And it's certainly better than, than using antibiotics from the point of view, at least the philosophy of what's happening. So what about their other idea about using these mutated genes? Well, see, they did another study too that showed that what happens is that uh, there's, C. diff is recurrent in about, I say, 20 to 50 percent of people who have it. It is no surprise because of the nonsensical way we treat it. And we'll get to what's a good treatment in a minute. But what they did is, is they found out that there's a gene in the C. diff microbe that turns off toxin production after a certain point. If you have that gene, that's good. But if you don't have that gene, then you're at risk for having a much longer infection with C. diff. So they found a way to measure this and to predict who is going to have a, a more of a problem with the C. diff infection. Well, this just sounds kind of crazy to treat it with what causes it, yeah. and then if a mutated gene, then you use more antibiotics. Well, here's the problem, Vicki, is, is we don't get trained in nutrition. And we don't... Doctors, know, meaning doctors. doctors. Are, right. Or nurses. We, we just don't get much in the way of nutrition. I took nutrition. Yeah, how long? I don't know. I took a course <laughs> in it. You took about an hour. Well, that's true. So <laughs> maybe that's why you knew more nutrition than I did for such a long time when we were married. So well, we still are. Yeah, married. we still are, but we're in our early in our marriage. That's right. So uh, I think that what we need to do is find a way that makes more sense, and it's out there, because the problem is, is there, there's a disordered balance of the microflora of the gut, meaning that when you take antibiotics and you're in the hospital because you're sick, your immune system's down, you're taking these antibiotics, they're killing the microbes that are sensitive to the antibiotic and leaving the others there to overgrow. So C. difficile is similar to MRSA in this way because yes. it's often a resistant to, exactly. uh, to antibiotics. And we now have MRSA outside the hospital and we have C. diff outside the hospital. These used to be infections that were only in the hospital. And that's because we're creating uh, more resistant forms of these every time we use antibiotics. So what can you do then? Well, you can give a probiotic to start with. Doesn't that make sense? A friendly bacteria. Yeah. So instead of trying to crowd out the bad ones. Right. So instead of killing the good guys, you leave them alone. And the guys that are that are the ones that shouldn't be there, you're going to crowd out like just like what Vicky's saying. So a probiotic is absolutely a brilliant way to treat this. And then many times people that take antibiotics end up getting yeast infections. Sure, that's the overgrowth part of it. So what about Saccharomyces boulardii? A good thing to do because it's a friendly yeast that will crowd out those candida infections that are there. And then there are things that just support the gut. You know, there's something about wellness and prevention and being proactive about strengthening the gut rather than trying to attack the microbe. And that makes a lot of sense because now we give the, the uh, amino acid L-glutamine, which is a major metabolic fuel of the small intestine. And, that will, and, and, and it does a lot to strengthen 
the defense mechanisms that the gut has. And then add something that has a lot of different kinds of fuel, uh, kinds of things that the gut needs to be able to repair itself. And there are many products that can do that that are like Ultra Clear Sustain. And you have a pretty good success rate with this treatment, don't you? Oh, it's been easy. I, I, I remember years ago when I was doing hospital work, I was, up, I was almost bragging about how you guys are doing the silliest thing. And they, they, they thought about it, and, and they thought maybe that it made sense, but they weren't going to do it because it was malpractice, actually, at that time, because the standard of practice said treat it with antibiotics and cholestyramine, which binds the toxin. So when they'd have a case that was in the hospital for a few weeks, they, they'd say, okay, Mr. Smart Guy, see what you can do with this one. And every time that happened, there were about six or seven times that did, the patients who had been in the hospital for weeks sick got well within a week and went home. And I kept them on this protocol for about six months. Because well, you were better at this than the gastroenterologists. Still am. Yeah, they just don't understand the cellular biochemistry and physiology of what's going on in the intestinal tract. So this is a, a new approach to uh, curb C. diff infections. And we don't want to throw all the information out that these people from Harvard and Penn State came up with because it's good stuff to know. And intestinal alkaline phosphatase, I would add that to the treatment that I do when it's available to be used in clinical practice. The other part about measuring the genetic uh, aspects of C. diff, not a bad idea to do, but it's just one of those things that's probably going to cost more money. And the treatment that we have when we're doing this nutritional approach works wonderfully, so probably don't even need it.